Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we've got a brand new feature within QuickBooks. I think you're going to be really interested. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, certified UK trainer, and also that QuickBooks chat. Now, QuickBooks has recently put a new feature into QuickBooks Online, which basically means that it can start to look at filing your self-assessment tax return. Fortnightly, we, me and my co-host Ash do a podcast regarding QuickBooks and their upcoming changes, and here's a little snippet of what to expect from it. The thing I'm going to show you today is that new self-assessment element, which is going to give you the ability to be able to go in there and be able to look at filing your tax return, but more importantly than that, get an estimate of what your tax return is going to be. It's really powerful and it's something that we're quite excited to have a play around with. Now it doesn't seem to be available for everyone so it is still in the testing stages. When the full version is released I will be sure to do a full video on this channel. So make sure you like, subscribe and all that jazz and over to myself to go and give you an introduction to how this worked. Cheers all. Okay Ash, this one could be a little bit decisive in terms of uh, people liking this feature and not liking this feature, but it's here and it seems to be here to stay. So first and foremost in front of me is a copy of um, QuickBooks itself. Now, it's nothing special about this particular file. One thing to note about it though, if I just go up into the, into the admin section at the top, company cog, accounts and settings, and you'll notice that when I come to company type, we have sole proprietor, which is basically your sole trader. And if you've not seen this before, basically you can drop down here and choose what type of organization you is. You have now for this particular one, we have a sole trader selected. And on select sole trader accounts, and it seems to be around about 20% uh, of the accounts at the moment. So if you've got a sole trader account, just have a look and see if this is here. But you will notice that there is a element down the bottom here under taxes called self-assessment. So if I click into the self-assessment section, just like on QuickBooks self-employed, on QuickBooks, and bear in mind this is the full version of QuickBooks now, so this is QuickBooks Online, so that's for Simple Start, Essentials and Plus, it seems that we have now the option to do a self-assessment directly in the product. Now, as it stands at the moment, the way that it's been set up is we only have an option to view an estimate, but we are very much informed and we can see from the way if you look at all the literature that's been released with it, that there'll be an opportunity to file your tax return directly in QuickBooks later down the line. So before we get looking to any further, Ash, what, what's your thoughts so far? Are you kind of fuming? Are you excited? What's How, how are you standing? Um, I'm really excited about this, Aaron. I can't lie. I mean, I love it. Um, I can see some accountants might think, oh, you know, and I can sort of uh, appreciate that because, you know, some clients might, you know, jump on this and start digging away, thinking, oh, my tax estimate is this without having a proper review first. Um, but at the moment, I think it is uh, a fantastic addition. And I think we were only talking about Simple Start versus QuickBooks Self Employed almost a month ago. Um, where I was saying I wish that, you know, that tax, you know, submission feature was available in QuickBooks Online. And it's almost like, my, you know, my, you know, my wishes have come true, if you like. So, great, fantastic. Show me more, that's what I say. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is, uh, <clears throat> for, for clients, it's a huge thing. It's absolutely brilliant for them. One of the worst things you can have is, coming up to a year end and not knowing what your tax bill is going to be. And, you know, if anything, like a lot of my clients burying the head in the sand and not knowing until the last moment what their tax bill, at least with something like this, where you've got that estimate being created for you, you know, if you can keep that money to one side, you're going to be in a really good position in terms of being able to afford that tax bill at the end. Um, so just a few clarifications to how to get this to work, though. Notice that you need to make sure you've got a bank account of some sort connected. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to physically connect the bank using the um, auto enrollment and, and uh, uh, open banking solution and be able to actually physically connect it. I was just, I've just updated this via a CSV file. So I've uploaded the bank 
information manually and it seems to have worked so just sort of a if you do have a file that has this you need to make sure you've got a bank ac account at least connected or at least working for it to work so what happens is as you press this view estimate button to begin with as soon as we press the view estimate it does give you this bit of a disclaimer so basically it's telling you that it's designed for sole traders who use accrual accounting. And what that basically means is if you're not just relying on the money going in and out of your bank account, but actually you're thinking and considering using it for um, invoices that may not have been paid or bills that you haven't paid yet. So it's going to take into account anything that's in a particular tax year that's not actually been paid. Um, need to submit a self-assessment return for 6th of April 19 to the 5th of April 2020. So I've got a bit of humble pie. Me and Asher, when we first heard about this, I was adamant that this was going to be for the 2020 to 2021 um, uh, um, estimate. But actually, no, it is looking at the tax return that people are going to have to file by the 31st of January 2000 and 21 so the next basically the tax return period filing period we're in now that can be filed at any point now so it is looking back at last tax year effectively the one that's been enclosed it's not just starting to build up for the current tax year if that makes any sense um don't have any disallowable expenses now the reason for that is because it doesn't give you an opportunity yet in quickbooks to state if a transaction is disallowable or not and they say you are VAT registered. Now, that's a bit of a curious one for us. We're not 100% sure why that would be a massive issue or massive difference. Um, but at the moment, that's what this kind of beta version, if you like, or the first iteration of the self-assessment tax return is based on. So once you've got and you're happy that that's done, and also disclosure on this particular file, I've not set VAT registration up whatsoever. So even if you're not VAT registered, you can still at least be able to access this element. You press the got it button. And from there, it gives you this new view. And this whole point of this new view is to give you an estimate of your tax at this point in time. So in the top left-hand corner, it's giving you an estimate of what your income tax will be based on the information that it's got in QuickBooks. It also gives you a date at which the information needs to be submitted and what tax year it's related to. We assume later down the line, you're going to have an opportunity to move between these tax years so you can see multiple tax years and how you're doing. It's going to bring in information. Now, notice there is no opportunity here to interact with these numbers at this current state. So you can't go in, change the numbers around, or go in and edit the numbers at, at, at any point. This is going to bring the information directly from QuickBooks itself. So it's giving you your annual turnover. And I'll show you later where we got these figures from. But basically, all, all this data, it's all, all estimate data, and we've just thrown this into this file. It's also going to bring in all the other elements you might have to consider as a business. So it's got your cost of sales, basically the same boxes that appear on a tax return. So you've got wages, and we've got rent, and we've got phone and telephone sort of things coming through as well. And that gives us the amount of expenses. Now, curiously, they call it allowable business expense. So if you do have a disallowable expense, and the only way you're going to be able to achieve putting it on the software at the moment is to not post it against P&L. So things like depreciation and things like that, it's going to be weird, but we've just got to find a new way of being able to bring them in. Um, we've also got our business income, less our allowable business expense means that we have a net profit of £14,000. And with that £14,000, that's where the estimate is being created. So £325.94p of estimate. And then it also brings down the bottom here, your class two and class four. One thing that you have to bear in mind there when using this is you've got to add these two figures together to give you an indication of how much is due. What do you think to that, Ash? I think it's great. Um, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, it really uh, should make everyone's life, you know, hopefully easier in the long run. Um, just, uh, I'll sort of go uh, back a step there. I've got, I'm slightly um, distracted, sorry, I think our, our guest might still be trying to uh, join us. So I was trying to uh, take a little bit of a message there. Yeah. Um, with I wonder that yeah I'm still curious on the VAT. Did you try to set, uh, switch it on without switching on the VAT first, or would it just not play? No, I've not switched on this particular file. There's no VAT on whatsoever. 
Um, know, which so is why got... I'm really curious about that statement that you, it's designed for VAT registered companies. It doesn't oh, make right. cool. sense. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, yeah, I, I'm a bit flummoxed on that one too. So, yeah, <laughs> doesn't make so, sense at all. So, yeah, so you didn't need to switch on VAT and it still worked. No, again, the only things I've had to do on this is make sure A, I had it set under my accounts and settings as a sole trader, and then B, and Again, we're not sure why this isn't a reason or there's a, uh, a, a why we've had to do this. But at the moment, we have to make sure that our, our bank account at least got some transactions going through it. If you don't have any bank accounts connected, and again, at this point, all I've done is use a CSV file, then you just get zeros coming up, even if you have got other, tr other transactions within QuickBooks. So it is, it is a weird one. It's one of those where um, I'm not 100% I'm not sure why you have to have the bank connected, but we've seen this before. So cash flow forecast, for example, you can't do anything. You can't put that into, or you can't even look at the cash flow forecast unless you've got a bank account physically connected, not just as a, a bank statement. So I feel like the QuickBooks is almost protecting themselves, if you like. They want to get um, data in there that they can rely on. So it will only really start to interact if you've got that bank account connected. Yeah, it makes sense really that you... Um that you, you know you have got plenty of data in there um strange i guess that um you don't have to connect but then i get you know, with that uh, being said it's unlikely um you know unless you're trainers like us that you would actually import a bank file unless you actually had a bank account so it, you know it does right. you know it does make sense as a group you know, you're trying to get your bank information in there one form or another either by connecting or at least you've got that bank uh, free uh, CSV uploaded. So there's plenty of data in there. So at the moment, um, with regards to how it's actually put the income and expenditure in the different sort of pots, how has it picked that up? So I mean, at the moment, it's all based on what category we've posted to. So if I jump into just looking at my trial balance or P&L, let's just do a P&L and do last year, you'll notice these are the same figures that it's bringing through. So there's your 25K of sales. Now, some of that is actually an, an invoice that I've created. So I just quickly create an invoice and it added that in as £20,000. And then the rest of them are directly from the bank. So it's interacting with both of them. It's bringing those transactions in for us. It's putting them in. But when it comes to expenses, you, you'll see that they've just taken them directly from the bank account. And it seems to be from the detailed element. So if you know from when you do your chart of accounts and you get to choose what the detail type of it is, it seems to be coming from there. So depending on what detail type these fall in, so rent, against the rent and wages against payroll it's just going to put that information against the, the relevant pots that makes sense because um, a few years ago when we first started training um, we used to get asked what's the difference between the detail and the ordinary type uh, within QuickBooks and in the US you know they've been using QuickBooks for years and years desktop and online and they've been able to file their tax returns for years um, using Intuit software and I'm pretty sure their tax returns are all based upon that detail type so it does uh, make sense that the UK is going to follow whatever we've got in there because you you know we can't as users of QuickBooks add any more detail types in there we are limited so it makes that job easier for the programmer to make sure that detail type has got a weak call that box on the tax return job done exactly right exactly right and and i think it's it's also you know it a it gives us a reason why detail type is there and i think also for us it just means that as an accountant that's kind of another kind of almost role for us if you like in terms of making sure the detail types going to the right one and things like that so you know unless you're you know understanding how the tax return works it's just something you might want to just consult with someone just to make sure those detail types are right going forward because like like you said we we tend to um, when we were teaching or when we do teach chart accounts we tend to kind of explain to people not to worry too much about detail type but actually now it seems like it could be something that could be important going forward no you're quite right Aaron. yeah it is something that we haven't had to worry about in fact 
you know, I've spoken to other accountants in the past um, that you know, when it comes to the detail type, the, the comment I had once was, oh, well, I'll just ignore the detail type. I don't even bother looking <laughs> at it. And I thought, well, I mean, I've always tried to get it fairly level only yeah. because just, just the way I am and that's how I sort of thought about it years ago. But, yeah, now it, I think especially, you know, it's going to be more and more important to get that tax return, you know, just as you want it. Hello, and there you go. And hopefully you like that little look at what was happening within QuickBooks and the fact that self-assessment is now doable in QuickBooks Online itself. It's always been a feature in self-employed that people have really enjoyed and really liked. So it's nice to see that it's also in that one as well. That's gonna really help. It's gonna give some benefit to a lot of people. If you like that content though, don't forget we do this fortnightly on this channel. So make sure you join us live if you have any burning questions that you need to talk about. With that, that's been me. It's been a pleasure to do this video with for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we stay in bed My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.